Um, we're getting ourselves ready for the seventh and its aftermath. And I think it's important that the people of Ghana know some of the immediate steps that have to be taken. And that is why I've called you here to, to make these announcements. There are three sets of appointments that the president is required to make. Two of them don't need the approval of parliament or any other body. They are appointments by the president and they have to do firstly with the direct organization of his office. And then secondly, with the operation of the national security apparatus. So those are the two sets of appointments that I'm going to announce to you and to the Ghanaian people. I have decided to appoint as my chief of staff, Akusia Frema of Paris, or say, who is a development consultant and a labor and employment exper expert with 40 years of experience in these fields. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Home Science from the University of Ghana and a Master's degree in Foods from the University of Guelph, Canada. She was a lecturer at the University of Ghana Legon from 1976 to 1982, and a consultant for the United Nations in the Women in Fisheries Program in countries such as Uganda, Ethiopia, Congo, Kenya, and Namibia. She was also Deputy Minister for Manpower, Youth, and Employment from 2005 to 2008 under the, pre the government of President John Ajikun Kufo. She's married with four children. She has worked very closely with me over these last years, and I have confidence that she will be able to organize the Chief of Staff's office to help me prosecute the agenda and the mandate that the Ghanaian people has, have conferred on me. So, Madam, stand up for you all of you to see. That's her, of course, you have to say all that. I don't, I don't, uh, yes, yeah. I don't, uh, I left out the fact that she was also a two-time member of parliament for Ayawasu West Wogon. So this is a very rounded woman who has many sides to her, and I think that the, the office that she's going to occupy will be one where her experience and multifaceted uh, personality will be able to deal with very effectively. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. The next is the secretary to the president. I've decided to appoint a 53-year-old lawyer who has been practicing for over 20 years, and that is Nana Bedichu Asante. He's quite a well-known, quite a well-known character. Some would say quite a controversial thing, yeah? but he's a well-known figure, educated in Ghana, the UK, and the United States, and he has a, law, a Doctor of Law degree from the University, the New York University of Law. He's been called to the bar, both in New York as well as in Ghana. And right now, he's the managing partner at Ampim Chambers, which is a, a well-known corporate law firm in Ghana. He's married with four children. Once again, I believe this is a, a person of quality and who will be able to help me in the job of president as my secretary. So, come and let the whole world see you. Yeah, this is Nana Santi Bidia to you. One of the most important fixtures of my political circles, the last 20 years, uh, is the man who has been the director of research in the electioneering campaigns that I've waged in 2008, 2012, and in the latest one in 2016. He's an economist, he's a consultant, he's a financial and research analyst. And he's in the person of Victor Newman. 
He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Agricultural Economics with postgraduate qualifications in Development Planning and Budget and Financial Management. He has worked at the Economic Research and Planning Services of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Western Castings Limited, and Ghana Exim Economic Consultants. From 2008 till 2016, as I said, he has served as the Director of Research for my electioneering cam campaigns. I have no doubt that he will continue to be a pillar in my office, providing the relevant information that would allow us to take good decisions. He's married with four children, Mr. Victor Newman. The next is a young man, founder of Tescon, who has been a close aide of mine for many, many years. He's my political assistant, and he's one of the two young men who's going to act as deputies to Akushia Frema, Francis Asensu Boache. A lot of people think he has a lot of resemblance to the former Congolese leader, Kabila. <laughs> so they call him Kabila in some circles. <laughs> he holds a, a, a BSc degree in development planning from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He has a master's degree in public policy and administration from the Michigan State University and a certificate in public sector management from Tulane University in Louisiana in the United States. He's a development planning project management and policy specialist. With over 15 years of wide ranging professional experience in his field, he's worked at the Ministry of Employment and Social Welfare, the Global Media Alliance, Delta Acquisitions, and the Ghana Free Zones Board, amongst other places. He has been my political assistant since 2008. He's married with two children. He's done a yeoman's job for me uh, as my political assistant, as it were, stage manager, especially the successful campaign that we have just been through. And I have no doubt that he has a lot to bring to the office of Chief, Deputy Chief of Staff. It will be a real, another real pillar in the office. He's married with three children. This is Francis Asensu. The other deputy is uh, a young lawyer who's beginning to make a name for himself both as a broadcaster and as a lawyer. He's a graduate of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, initially with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics. He earned a Bachelor's of Law degree from the Faculty of Law, the University of Ghana, and has been subsequently called to the Ghana Bar as a, as a solicitor and barrister of the Supreme Court of Ghana. That was in 2012. He's on, in the process of also earning a master's degree in law in alternative dispute resolution from the Faculty of Law, University of Ghana, hopefully this May. He's a member of a very reputable commercial and corporate law firm that is Mrs. Kulindia Law. And ever since his undergraduate days, has been a close aide of mine. Errand boy, getting information, advising, telling me what the young people are thinking about. And I found him an invaluable companion and aide and supporter. He's Samuel Abu Jinapo. Yeah. So that's it. And Abu is also married with one child. The Director of State Protocol is an old hand, <coughs> somebody who was a Foreign Service Officer, Career Service, Foreign Service Officer, served with distinction, has already been, was Chief of Protocol to the Foreign Minister when I was uh, Foreign Minister, so I know the quality of his work. He has served in several um, hosting Saudi Arabia, Denmark, Cuba, and Japan, where he was Deputy Chief of Mission. And his last posting in the Ghanaian Foreign Service was as our ambassador to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Right now, he has a job with the United Nations in, in Khartoum, Sudan. And uh, he's agreed to 
truncate that and come and act as the director of state protocol. He's married with four children. I'm referring to Ambassador Hassan Ahmed. The next is a young man who's been my press secretary, media secretary, for the last three or four years, and whom I have found to be extremely dedicated and efficient in the work that he's done. I think a great deal of the information and the publicity about what I'm doing, what our party has been doing, the, our positions on matters that have been fed to the Ghanaian people have been filtered through him. He's a graduate from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology with a Bachelor of Science degree in Materials Engineering. So it tells you that you can be all kinds of things in this world if you so want to be. He worked as a teaching assistant in the Department of Materials Engineering for one year and then joined the Dankwa Institute as a research analyst in 2008. He stayed with the Institute until February 2014 when he came to act and became my press secretary. He's been another invaluable assistant to me in the work that I've done that has brought me to where I am today. He's married with one child and he will be the director of communications at the presidency. That is Eugene Ahim. <laughs> He's one of you. Yes, yes, that's how it is, yeah. Um, the next is one of the MPP's big stars. He's done a lot of work for our party, major organizer and mobilizer of the party, and he's going to be the director of operations of the presidency. Many of the political initiatives that are going to emanate from the presidency will have him at the head. He's a well-known businessman and an extremely astute politician well known for his organizational and operational acumen. He was national organizer of our party for eight years. And before that, he served as the Greater Accra Regional Secretary. In 2012, I appointed him as Director of Operations for the MPP presidential campaign. And in 2016, he worked in the office of the pres my office as the person responsible for monitoring and He's seen to the compliance of the various objectives of the campaign. He did another excellent job. And uh, I find it very difficult to go forward without him. That's Lord Oblite Komi. The next person is the young woman who has been in charge of my life. She's organizing my office, my diary, and has proved to be a very strong-willed and excellent personality. Her name is Saratu Atta. She's a graduate of the University of Warwick and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Politics and International Studies. She worked as a securities trader at first Discount Securities House in Lagos, Nigeria, and then went to establish her own security printing company in Lagos. In 2008, she was appointed the MPP campaign secretary and has been office manager and executive assistant to me in my office since 2009. She's a mother of one child and one of the people most responsible for keeping me on the straight and narrow, Saratu Atta. The last in the people who are directly affected in my office is a young lady who's come into my life in the last couple of years and whom I've also found to be very, very useful material. And that is Napaga Tia Sulemana. She's a presidential staff. 30 year old, she's a graduate of the University for Development Studies and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Integrated Development Studies, specializing in social, political, and historical studies. She worked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for a year and has also worked with the Ghana Health Service and the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, on maternal health issues. She was a very prominent campaign aide to me during the recent electioneering 
uh, campaign and will be a key presidential staffer at Jubilee House when we get there. Napaga, Tiaz, yeah. So those are the appointments that go to the organization of my office as from the 7th of January, uh, the people that you'll be seeing and, and dealing with. There's another set of appointments that have also to be announced because of their operational significance, and that is those who are going to look after issues of national security for my government. The first, there neither of them are here, but the minister here, the first is the National Security Advisor. I've decided upon the very eminent soldier, a military engineer who holds an executive master's degree in governance and leadership from GIMPA. He's also a graduate of the Ghana Military Academy. He has a solid military background, having done almost 40 years of distinguished service with the colors. Has served in various capacities in both military and local government. He served as the Metropolitan Chief Executive of the Kumasi Met Metropolitan Assembly from 1995 to 96. And from 2006 to 2010, he was the General Officer commanding the Southern Command of the, Arm of the Army. He's a very distinguished soldier with a very broad perspective on both political and national affairs and I'm counting on him to be a source of very good advice to me as the National Security Advisor. That is Brigadier General Emmanuel Ochery is the, is the name. The, the operator, as it were, the coordinator, who is so-called the National Security Coordinator, is another product of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and a former director of the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI. He worked at the BNI for about 22 years, where he served at command levels in the northern, upper east, Ashanti, and greater Accra regions. He's also served as head of the investigations unit of the Bureau. He rose to become the deputy director of BNI and ultimately the director of BNI from 2005 to 2008. This is yet another very valuable material for me, somebody who's been working closely to, for me ever since 2009, and um, I believe that he's the right person, he has the right temperament, a very calm, stable man, to be the National Security Coordinator. Finally, I, as part of the National Security Architecture is the minister, who is going to be responsible for national security. It cannot be an appointment of mine because he needs to go through vetting at the parliament. And I'm hoping that the parliament will be kind to both him and myself and pass it when the time comes. He is the... Oh, I'm sorry, apparently I didn't mention the name of the coordinator. He's Joshua Treme, the former BNI director, Joshua Treme. I'm sorry. So the minister, as you know, the Security and Intelligence Act, Act 526, calls for the designation of a minister with ministerial responsibility for the intelligence agencies and their work, who will be also the accountability person for parliament and for the public. Um, his name will have to go before parliament for approval before we can announce him as the minister. But he is, if you like, the minister designate on my part for the national security. He's a very experienced politician and a very experienced um, activist in the national security area. He was both minister of, of uh, interior as well as minister of defense in President Kufour's government. Prior to that, he had held equally important uh, jobs as Minister of Energy and Minister of Communications. So we're talking about a public figure with a very broad background in the national issues that confront our country. And I believe that with that background and with the, the sort of personality that he is, he's going to make an exceptionally good Minister for National Security. 
So this is the name of Albert Kandapa, and I'm going to urge, urge, urge the parliament to pass him as quickly as possible so that he can get to work. So, <coughs> so ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the announcements that I have to make. I'm grateful for your presence here. I think it is to be understood clearly that these appointments are appointments that will take effect from the 7th of January. That is if I survive the oath-taking ceremony and I come out of it okay. Jubilee House, as it is likely to be called now, uh, if you listen to him carefully, he made reference to the fact that uh, they will be working with him at the Jubilee House. And these are individuals of great repute uh, who have been named as his backroom staff. I can run through the, the, the list for you. Uh, Madame Firma Osei Opare uh, will be the chief of staff under the Kufuadu administration. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I remember I spoke to you at the Thanksgiving service and said I heard a rumor that this was going to be made possible. Finally, the day has come to pass. How do you feel about being appointed the chief of staff? Well, um, I will say that uh, I feel humbled that the president elect will select me for such an important position. Um, but I'm also excited. I'm looking forward to supporting the president to deliver his mandate, particularly in the areas of uh, promise, Ghanaians, of which Ghanaians really uh, voted massively for him. So I am ready for battle, and I look forward to serving his excellency, and by that extension, the people of Ghana. Very big position, Chief of Staff, the first woman to occupy such a high-profile office. Uh, how are you going to link your office between the party, the governance, to make it work as effective as possible? Well, um, I may look young, but I'm not. Absolutely. In the sense that I do come with some experience that I think will help. Having managed and invest a department, uh, University of um, Ghana, uh, that is the Home Science Department as the acting head of the department. I've had lots of managerial experience, having managed uh, two big programs in Ghana. Uh, I worked as the senior program coordinator for SNV, Netherlands Development Organization. And prior to my going to parliament, worked for ActionAid as the country director for uh, the NGO that's I'm sure you know about the NGO. It, it has at least six uh, regional programs. So in terms of managing people, in terms of strategy development, in terms of development work, which is what governance is all about, improving lives of the people, I, I feel ready in terms of the all-round uh, skills that I bring on board. 
you asked about um, managing the party. Yes, it is always a tricky one. But I feel that uh, during the um, 2012 elections, if you recall, I was the conflict resolution director. And at that time, we managed to resolve so many thorny issues in such a way that for the first time in 2012, we hardly had any independent candidates emerging in any strong way. So that was a lot of work. I worked with a team, of course, like SK Boafo, Dr. Heyman, Mami Salifu, uh, Dianan. But we worked very well and managed to bring the party together to see ourselves first as MPP rather than as individuals. So I think I come with that scale. And also, if uh, I may say so, the last uh, couple of years, since I would say September 2016 and 2013, uh, I've been coordinating Nanes political affairs until today. So I am happy to uh, accept the position. I feel ready. All I need is your cooperation and most importantly, your prayers. Congratulations, ma'am, and we wish you well. Mom, We will still pick more, more reactions uh, from, and Abu, Abu is here, Abu, you just want to congratulations uh, after, you know, after the up and down from 2008 up to now, now you are now moving to a very reputable office, Deputy Chief of Staff, what do you bring on board? Well, thank you very much. I think it's in order to thank um, the President uh, for reposing this confidence in me and to thank all and sundry for the support they've given me over the years and thank my family, my wife, my daughter and everybody else. Um, what I bring on board is really um, a lot of uh, dynamism, um, intellect, um, brilliance in all humility and modesty permanently to support the chief of staff. But that is going to be my role. My role will be to support the chief of staff for her to discharge her mandate in a manner that the president will be successful in a manner that the government of President Nakufuado will be successful. So I'm gearing up and I'm poised to give the Chief of Staff, Madame Frema, Mrs. Opari, the needed support and assistance to get her secretariat, as in the Chief of Staff Secretariat. As you do know, the Chief of Staff Secretariat is almost like the fulcrum around which the government machinery revolves. And it will require that I give her all the support and give her the best of support, efficient, effective support that will en en ensure that the government and the president achieves its vision for this country. It looks like you are not wasting no time. You are ready in the saddle and ready to deliver on the promises of America. And looking at what has happened so far, some would have waited after inauguration to come up with these lists. So, ready to go? Well, first of all, you will see that in the fourth Republican dispensation, it takes almost about sometimes seven, eight months for a government or a president to put together his government. Ministers, it takes, let's say, almost one and a half months before the minister, before the president announces his ministers. And then they go to parliamentary vetting. As you know, the law requires that parliament gives two weeks notice, yeah. um, public notice, mm -hmm. before vetting can even commence. So by the time the government is put in place, some eight months is gone. And then we have four-year mandate, and the last year is a year for elections and the rest. This is a novelty and this is unprecedented. This is a president who is very clear in his mind, um, who, who has a program and who is very clear in his mind the kind of people he intends to work with. And, and the announcements today show that this is a president who wants to hit the ground running and it's a president who, who is very clear in his mind where he's taking this country to. I think it's a good thing. All right. He's actually even announced our ministers already. Right. He announced the minister for national security today. Mm -hmm. So you will imagine that after the inauguration we are in office and we start to work. My final question, we now not refer to the presidency as the Jubilee House. Is that going to be the name? That's what the president, um, um, the president, the president elect referred to the government house as the Jubilee House. Um, we leave it like that. I think that we, we will cross the bridge when we get there. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Abuja Napo. He is a deputy chief of staff. And we'll see if we can bring you more reactions from some of the individuals who've been appointed, and then. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that these individuals are going to be the backroom staff to help Nana Kufuado achieve the many promises and to help coordinate his government between you know, the ministries and then the, 
the seat of president. So these are appointments that, that does not require parliamentary approval, with the exception of the Minister for National Security, which went to Mr. Kandapa. Parliament would then have to sit and then, you know, uh, vet, vet him to, you know, establish his suitability for the job. But apart from Mr. Kandapa, who is going to the National Security Ministry, the rest, the uh, Chief of Sub, Deputy, uh, Director of Protocol, these are appointments uh, that does not require parliamentary approval. So the expectation here is that once Anad Kufado is inaugurated on the 7th of January this particular weekend, come Monday, we will move into the Jubilee House, as he himself put it, to start work. Uh, we'll bring you more reactions from the residents of Nanda Kufuado about this appointment, trying to see if we can get to speak to the people who are directly involved in working with Nana from the 7th of January. But for now, my name is Elton Brobe, reporting from the Nima residence of President-elect Nana Rodankwe Kufuado.